Okay, guys, I think it's about time for another video in Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop. Welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. Ah, the sound's a bit tinny on this video. That's because I'm having to use my little webcam because my other camera has decided that it's not going to do anything. And I'm trying to save up for a Wii U or a Nintendo 3DS so I can finally play Sonic Lost World. I don't know why they just can't release that multi-platform so I can play it on my PC instead of having to save up to get a new console to play it on. But anyway, that's beside the point. Anyway, speaking on the subject of tinny microphones, today I'm going to build a much better version of the of a crystal microphone you may remember from a previous video, but this time it's going to be done much better. Got a piezoelectric crystal speaker thingy that I ripped out of something. Some cardboard and some paper. A little amplifier preamp circuit that I built, which we will go into detail later on. Now it may surprise some people to know that this little device here doesn't only just produce sound, but it can actually pick up sound. Not much sound, but it can actually do it if I just plug it into an amplifier here. Give it a few taps. Let's just turn it up a bit. So that might be all well and good. However, this little thing is not going to pick up much sound waves by itself. As a matter of fact, we're going to hear from this little um, piezo element the way it is. Now I've got it plugged into this reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder, as you can see. And I'm going to connect the headphone output up to the laptop, which is recording this video. So we'll hear pretty much directly how this little thing sounds. Okay, so as you heard, they were pretty substandard results. We didn't really get much out of that. Now, there's two reasons for that. One is that these things have to have a really, really high impedance amplifier. An ordinary microphone input is just usually too low impedance for this thing to work properly. So I have a complete mismatch in impedance there. Well, that's where this little circuit comes in. This, is, this preamp has a very high input impedance. It uses a TL072 op amp, which has a JFET input stage, so almost infinitely high impedance. Anyway, I've got that powered up on my homemade power supply here, and I've got this going off to the line input. If I tap this, let's just turn the volume up so you can hear it better. Alright, so now it's on. So now I'm going to do the same experiment again, but with this going through this little circuit here, which has a much higher input impedance, and we'll see the second problem that these things have. So, not much of an improvement, and that's because of the second problem these have. Well, these things are really, really stiff, so sound waves aren't really good, and there's not really much surface area for the sound waves to vibrate. So, what is the solution for this? Well, we've got to make something to catch more sound and put it straight onto that little disc there. And that's where the paper and the cardboard comes in. Now, firstly, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a I'm going to put a hole in the cardboard, the same size as this, and I'm going to stick that in the cardboard. Then I'm going to make a paper cone and glue that onto the centre of the disc, and you'll see that it makes a very big improvement. I've already done this, so I know it works. 
Well, here we go. Here's the little hole cut in the cardboard, and I've hot glued the piezo element in place, as you can see. Now, I'm just going to make a paper cone and glue that onto there. Then we'll give it another test, and you will be amazed at how good it sounds. All right. Got our cone ready. And I just hot glued the wires. And then my battery that I put here to hold them down has got stuck it onto that. Anyway, now just to attach the cone to the little piezo disc. Just a little dab of hot glue here. Stick that on there. Okay. Just hold this still while it cools. And there we are. The homemade microphone is now complete. So, I know you're dying to hear what it sounds like. So let's give it a little test. Okay, and here we are testing the Crystal Microphone version 2.0 or whatever. Well, as you can hear, the sound is vastly improved just by adding a paper cone onto the thing. And to prove that there is this thing that's picking up the sound, As you can hear, when I touch the paper cone, you get a very, very loud sound in the speakers. Of course, I'm not sure how good this is going to come through onto the laptop sound system. But I think I can say, without a doubt, that this is a 100% success. So now we'll go over to the schematics. So this is the schematic of my homemade crystal microphone. Well. This is the schematic of the preamp. As you can see, it's a pretty simple circuit. It uses a TL072 op amp, which has a really, really high input impedance, so things like this can be connected. And as you can see, there are no components here to add any kind of equalization or anything like that, so the sound you hear is as it is. I wanted to give this a gain of about 20, and, well, I don't have the exact resistors to give it that kind of gain, so I chose a 22 kilo ohm resistor and a 1 kilo ohm resistor. It gives it a gain of about 22, which is close enough. Of course, I'm only using one of the op amps in the chip, but it doesn't really matter. That's pretty much good. And some of you might have noticed that there's a 1 mega ohm resistor across where the microphone is connected. That's to solve two little problems. One is that a charge can build up on the microphone and prevent it from working, so that resistor will discharge any charge that builds up. And the other thing is, this microphone I made is extremely sensitive to low frequencies, so that helps with that a little bit. And, well, that's pretty much it. And yes, all this commentary that you've heard through the talk through of this circuit has been recorded using my homemade crystal microphone. So that's it for Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop, and until next time, goodbye. And for those of you who want to know what this microphone sounds like connected up to an ordinary microphone input, well, this is how it sounds, because I've just gone ahead and done that. And as you can hear, it sounds all tinny and bleh. Calling all cars, calling all cars. Pick me up 157 donuts, over.